First up, have pensioners been betrayed by the budget? Jeremy Hunt has said that the government has done an enormous amount for pensioners. That's after e economists claimed that older voters are the biggest losers from the budget. It's been reported that 8 million retirees would be £1,000 worse off from freezes in tax thresholds. Age UK says that the administration may regret airbrushing pensioners out. But do they get enough as it is? Give us a call, 0207 862 is that number again, and we'll speak to you in just a moment. Belinda, are we airbrushing pensioners out in this budget? I think they have been uh, let down and left out of this budget. I think this is for the second budget in a row where they've they've been left out. Um, you know, the grey vote was the bedrock, is the bedrock of the Tory vote. 67% of over 70s vote conservative and they had that audience to play to and they chose not to. Um, I'm not quite sure how they think they're going to win them over without giving them some financial easing because it doesn't increase the tax threshold, which means it's dragging so many more pensioners into paying higher tax. And actually this triple lock that everyone says, oh, you're so lucky you've got the triple lock. It's not a bonanza. It's not a gold mine to, to you know, uh, uh, fund trips to Costa del Sol and have pensioners living it up in their houses. You know, uh, the triple lock, I think, is the very least we can do. I feel very, very protective over our elderly. And I think many uh, in many other countries, they fare much better than they do in England. Um, and I really resent the rhetoric that's being targeted at the baby boomers at the moment. Almost the sort of millennials and Gen Z are, are targeting a lot of angst towards that generation. Um, and there is ageism going on. And actually, the baby boomers, they had it tough as well. They've worked 40 years, paid 40 years worth of tax. I think it's about time we took care of our elderly a little better. Well, I, I don't want to out you here, <laughs> Nina, but I think you might be the only pensioner on the panel I today. I certainly am. So I've you've been, got skin I've, in the game here. Do I've, you think that you have been left out of this budget? I think everybody has been so badly served by the Tory government and this 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 budget as well. Um, the I, I, might, I might as well say I've been paying tax for 57 years. Wow. So that's quite a heap of money, Amazing. basically. <laughs> anyway, so when it comes to the national insurance, taking 2p off national insurance, that doesn't affect pensioners in any way at all because it's only the working population until the age of retirement. And I think that's perfectly fair to, for that that, we, that, that, that doesn't affect us at all. And it, and it means that people who are of working age are, are being taxed less a second time on what they earn. And I think that's, that's absolutely fair and the way it should be. We are indeed getting the 8.5% in April, which people have whinged about and said, oh, it's too much and we should you know, cut the triple lock. The, the triple lock must remain and Labour has said that they will retain the triple lock because it has to be, because pensioners are the, the generation and, the, and, and the, the section of the population who don't necessarily have the ability to go out and earn more and supplement the basic mm. pension. This budget does not affect people who are living totally on the state pension. It doesn't make any difference to them at so all. it only Where, affects the, the wealthier people, pensioners. Wealthier pensions. And, and I guess I am one because I, I'm still paying tax because freezing the tax threshold means that more money or, or people have, you know, massive private pensions, which I don't have, um, that will drag them over into the, into the whole thing. So it is unfair to every. I think it's unfair to everybody. Mm. Uh, and, we're, and we are looking at the, the, the dregs of a Conservative government, which has laid waste, it's plundered this country and the people in it, putting profits before people. And w this is just an act of desperation to try and um, s sort of sweet talk the uh, population to thinking, I'll vote Tory. Nobody's okay. that daft. Well, it's interesting when it comes to uh, the budget, it sounds like you're actually all right with what's happened here. But you say that it's only the wealthier pensioners. I mean, we're talking about potentially 8 million pensioners here out of 12 million uh, people claiming their pensions. So that is the majority of pensioners this will affect. And, and, and the reason we, we need to work is because nobody has, you know, there are obviously wealthy, we're not talking Richard Branson, for instance, we're not talking Mick Jagger, we're not talking that, that sort of section of the, of the population. But, and, and there are pensioners, as was discussed uh, earlier on, on, uh, on the show, um, who do have houses, you know, four or five bedroom houses in which they still live. They can't afford to downsize many of them. But so the, the thing is that there are 
there is a, a, a proportion of us who have to keep working. We have to keep working, and 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 that I see is 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 not being is not being catered to by the budget. Okay, so that's interesting. That tells me that actually you're not so keen on the budget then. Oh, I'm I'm not keen on the budget at all. No, no, but I mean I'm in not... terms of what they're doing for pensioners, because I think a lot of people will look at the budget and, and pensioners will say w w they didn't even mention Jeremy Hunt didn't even mention pensioners at all in the speech. Now, some people will look at that and go, well, you should only be relieved. The only thing that he could have said about pensioners was we're going to do away with a triple lock. So the fact that you weren't mentioned is of a benefit to you. And then other people will say, yes, but we're now £1,000 worse off than we were, you know, before. This is not yes, good but, enough. But the, the fact that he's, he, that, that, that the, the, the sort of the, the levels have been frozen, it means that we are just the same as everybody else. In so it levels of, it out. It levels it out. We're just the same. Other people will be dragged into a, a higher tax bracket. And and so we are not being discriminated against, in a way. Everybody's being discriminated against. Yeah, but, but uh, I mean, that may be true, but elderly people are far more vulnerable and are a group that sh must not be discriminated oh, Hold uh, on. You're, I mean, you're saying that. We have a pensioner on the panel. Nina's out still working. She's still which is amazing. Money. Yes, and I know, but, but it's not amazing. She's better than most people I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're contributing to the to the country. Well, and, well hopefully, yes, yeah. and, and have done, and will continue so the, to but, do so. So what I'm saying I'm is, very lucky idea. that I, I work in an yeah. industry. I'm not. I haven't worked in a, in, a, in an industry that that's been taxing physically that that I, that I couldn't mm. continue to do. I'm very lucky. I can I can do what what I what I've always done. Yeah. and not everybody's but that what, lucky. But. Um, it, the, the the thing is that that you, you know you 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 have to do what you can, but the government doesn't help, and the government doesn't help anybody. Sorry, Belinda, I cut you off there. I was yeah. only trying to rebuff your statement that these are the most vulnerable people. Because well, I do think uh, some you, of them aren't. Oh, so, I agreed, some of them aren't. But I do think when you become weaker or your your health starts to impact you, also loneliness. We, we're not in a society anymore that that has that uh, intergenerational link that mm -hmm. that keeps us all together with grandparents parents living with, you know, grandchildren and actually talking of which, I think um, el elderly people, certainly those in their 70s, do a huge amount of free childcare for this country and that should be recognised in, in some tax breaks for them because how they're supporting the young of today, even though they get a lot of sort of, you know, uh, grief from uh, the younger generation about having had it all, they're the ones doing a huge amount of free childcare um, and I, I think it's right that we treat our elderly having worked and built this country with their hands. Uh, we, I think we should give them privileges. So maybe there were other things that they could have brought up in the budget that would have benefited. There could have been uh, some funding for grandparents that are do, that are looking after grandchildren because that's helping the economy. Yes. And also another thing that was considered was uh, getting rid of stamp duty for older people that wanted to downsize. That could have helped everybody. That 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 would that would have helped. But I, you know, I think we're we're we're, 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 look, we're looking at pensioners when we should be looking at the whole country. And, and seeing just how badly off we all we all are, it, it's 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 an absolutely a disgrace the way we are we are, we are a country on its knees. But I suppose what we're asking here is that yes, we are all worse off. But are the are pensioners the biggest losers when it came to Wednesday's budget? Let us know what you think. Oh two oh seven eight six two double two double two is the number. We're going to go straight to John from Devon. John, what's your thoughts on the budget? Good morning, everyone. Yeah, um, I'm a little disappointed. I'm not sure that uh, betrayed would be the right word. Hello? Hi there. No, we're listening. I just, oh, sorry. I, I, I've got the TV down. And I didn't know you were speaking. Good morning to you all. Yeah, I'm not sure betrayed. It's just that as a pensioner, I've just received a letter from the work and pensions people telling me that my pension would be going up by £20 a month. £20 yeah. pounds a week, sorry, to make £80 pounds a month. Yeah. Um, which you think, OK, that's fine, lovely. And then I look at how much other things have gone up all around me. Um, my food bills have gone up incredibly. My Obviously, the gas and electric have gone up ridiculous amounts. Everything has gone up. Mm. And if you're adding up everything together, it's a lot more than £80. Pounds. Yeah. And I'm wondering 
whether in fact that's actually right. It would seem that you, know, you want pensioners to be, well, they've got too much money, let's just take a little bit more. We won't give them too much money. And I, I'm, you know, I'm disappointed is perhaps a better word well, than betrayed. What, what are your thoughts? I suppose, John, well, I don't have any. I just ask questions and try and get your thoughts out of you. <laughs> but I suppose the counter argument to that would be, John, yes, energy prices have went up, food prices went up. I mean, rent's gone up, mortgages have gone up. Everybody yeah. is suffering, it's the cost of living crisis. And it is, as yeah. Nina says, affecting everybody. Perhaps what Jeremy Hunt did in his budget is just even it out a little bit that, John, yes, you're being affected, but so are millennials, so are Gen X. You know, every generation is, is sort of paying the price of a terrible economy at the moment. Yeah, I, I suppose. I, yes, I. Sorry, I'm talking across you there. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. But when I look at the the wage increases that other people, other industries, are asking for, mm -hmm. they are asking for a lot more than I've got. I mean, I don't. I I can't actually bring the top of my mind how much the pension yeah, is. It's about about eight hundred. It's eight, it's eight percent, I think, that pensioners got, yeah. and what you're talking yeah. about is maybe the doctors asking for thirteen yeah. percent. But the key yeah. to that is, John, they're asking for it. They're never getting that, or they're very unlikely mm -hmm. to get that. Yeah. And actually, the triple lock means that you're either going to get, oh gosh, what is it? The wage increases. So you're going to get the average of the national wage increases, inflation, yeah. or two point five two point five percent, whichever is yeah. the highest. So. The triple lock actually means that you will never be worse off than the general population. Oh, OK. Um, I hear what you say, but uh, I just look at how much money that I have to spend, my, my standard pension, and it's, it, it's, it's hard going. Mm. Um, and I, 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 my thoughts are that, in fact, a, you know, a little bit more... Uh, would be uh, uh, you know, much the appreciated. Because mm. why should it, I mean, I've paid tax from day one. Luckily, I've always been, you know, always been employed, mm. but I've, I've paid tax the whole time. And um, you know, now that I was, now that I need it, I mean, Lord only knows. I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, Devon. I just can't find a dentist anyway. Oh here. well, yeah. I mean, two weeks, you know, the usual thing I moan about. Um, so my life is getting worse by the week. John, <laughs> weirdly, I think you've summarised probably a feeling of quite a, a swathe of the quite population people, at the yeah. moment for, for for different reasons, perhaps. Uh, but I hope you find a dentist quite quickly, John. Thank you very much for your call, Linda from Kent, what do you think about pensioners and how they were treated in the budget or not treated, as the case may be? Uh, I think if I had to put it into one word, I'd say shabbily. Um, I think we're just taken for granted, aren't we? Because we can't go on strike. We can't do extra hours. You know, if you've got a job, you perhaps do a few extra hours to make up. But uh, every time something goes up, it still goes up for pensioners. We don't get a special special rate. And can I say, very often on your show, you say that pensioners get over £800 a week, um, a month, sorry. Um, I don't. I get just over £600. Okay, I, I'm um, not... Because... I, I, Linda, I'm not sure where that stat came from or, or, or who said it. Well, it's um, very often fetched up. Okay. And in fact, I think someone just said it just now, that pensioners get over £800 a month. Um, for some reason, I can't. I get just over £600 because even though I worked from 15 to 64, they tell me I haven't worked. I didn't work long enough. I've queried it several times, but that's another story. But... Well, yeah, I mean, that is another story, but I would query it again with you know, some ferocity in there. That sounds very strange, uh, Linda. But... But I suppose going back to the pensioners and being treated shabbily by this budget, mm. Mm. is it there an argument to say that the triple lock already protects all pensioners in all circumstances? So actually they didn't need to be given anything else at a time when nobody was getting any handouts? Well, I don't know about that, but I know that um, we've, we've got a car. Um, if that car was to go now, um, we wouldn't be able to afford a new one. Um, I'm not pleading poverty, but that's a fact. Mm. Uh, and yet I have young relatives who have a car each. So, yeah. you know... Yeah, and I suppose that's because they're they working, Linda. So, so well, they're yes, on they their... are working, yeah, so but they're... they still plead poverty. 
Well, so, so they're on their maximum. In I, don't, I mean, I don't know their situation. Do they need two cars for work? I mean, I'm, I, I'm not sure. But Linda, what could the government yeah, have put in that budget that would have benefited you then? Well, just a little bit more, I suppose. You know, it, it just seems that uh, you very often have a young man on there who says we're millionaire pensioners. Well, I haven't come across one yet. Yeah, I mean, it's be interesting done. because one of the arguments is that, you know, this um, this fiscal drag will only affect 8 million pensioners. It will only affect the wealthiest of pensioners. But when you think that that's 8 million out of a potential 12, it's quite a significant proportion of pensioners that are being affected by this and are likely to be a £1,000 worth off. And actually, listening to the two previous callers, you can hear it's really affecting um affecting both of you and both calling for just a little bit more. I know I think Linda makes a really good point by the way about that you know pensioners have no way of really complaining or doing anything mm -hmm. about it they say that you know the border sh they're border stuck. shoulders they're stuck. must bear the brunt they're but stuck. they've they're, always they're been stuck. stuck they've been stuck and I and I do think it's unfair that people have this idea that oh the elderly people are so so lucky and they had it so good they were born in the ruins of the second world war you know their parents suffered trauma bringing them up they were started off on rations you know every generation has its challenges and I don't think it's fair to sort of you know generalize about older people that they have it so good compared to Gen Z and, um, and the Millennials they really haven't and they most of them have worked since they were 15. Mm, well 16, you're hearing that as well. Well, well, not, and, not and most of them worked since they were 15 16 that's that oh, yeah no I think no I think yeah, newspaper rounds oh, oh, we everyone. just heard, oh, we just heard that Linda had okay jobs yes yeah, yeah. thank you very much Linda for your call thanks for all your calls we're actually going to take more of these calls after the break we're going to be asking do we need an International Women's Day have a think on that but first back to more calls on this have pensioners been betrayed by the budget and we'll go straight to the phone lines because there's been so many of you called Pauline from West Yorkshire what's your thoughts um, I'm a pensioner I do have a small private pension which brings me up into tax mm. um, range and to be quite honest I think anybody else who gets the same amount of income pays tax why shouldn't we uh, maybe, Pauline, because you potentially, I mean, not you personally, but pensioners generally may not have the opportunity to earn more money, so they are kind of hemmed into whatever the government's going to allow them to have. Neither do I. I'm 73. I retired at 65. Mm. But I don't, it's not easy, don't get me wrong. Mm. But I think we're the group, our age group, we cut everything according to what we could afford. If you don't afford it, you don't get it. And so you keep doing it. What about the triple lock then, Pauline? Do you think we need to keep that in place? I think we ought to. I mean, that does help, doesn't it? Uh, well, for sure um, it helps. It's just whether it's it'll last, whether we can keep doing it with an well, aging population. Time will tell, I'm sure, on that one. Well, somebody's going to have to take the bold step to change things, whether they put another protection in place, but and I don't know what party would have the confidence to do that, but very interesting, Pauline, to hear your point of view. Terry from Stoke-on-Trent, what's your thoughts on the budget? Do you think it was fair? Um, no, no, as usual, the um, <laughs> pensioners miss out. Uh, we, we have now had two hypothetical tax cuts, which have been moved over to the national insurance contributions. As a pensioner, I don't pay national insurance contributions. I, too, have a small private pension. So my, uh, my pension increase will move my pension allowances or my non-pension allowances over to my smaller pensions. So I will have deductions off those smaller pensions. Yes. So I am going to be losing out. I'm not I'm not gaining on this. No, no, Terry, I, I think that's the, that's the point, is that actually with this budget, it does look like pensioners, 8 million pensioners will lose out by the tune of about £1,000 a year. But no. with that in mind, pensioners have just had an 8% increase because of inflation, something that most other people would only dream of. And so the argument, I suppose, is that the triple lock already protects you and this is just evening, evening out the playing field so you're being hit by the cost of living the same as everybody else. £20, pound, £20 pound a week. Uh, that seems to be the average. Mm. Um, Shopping, petrol price, petrol's rocketing up again. Yeah. I'd, I'd run a small car. I have to save to run it, mm. uh, like most people. I have to watch my heating bills in the winter, uh, and, and I've worked all my life. 
Um, and uh, I've, I'm what you call a rich baby boomer property owner. Mm -hmm. I, I bought my house on a mortgage when interest rates were 15, 16 yeah. percent at one rate during Norman Lamont's reign. They went up to 19 percent. Yeah, they were a lot higher, but I think the difference was the mortgages were the sorry, the house prices were a lot lower, and people's wages uh, were no, more it, in line with that, which, it's which all made relevant, it easier. Though, isn't it? it it's all it's all relevant. That's I, my first saying. my first house cost me four thousand pounds when I was earning eighteen pounds a week. Yes. I mean, I, I I can't do the math sitting here right now, but the stats always rule out to prove that the the, the important thing is the wage to house price ratio. And previously, it has always been much easier to purchase a house than it is now. Most young people don't even dream about buying a house now because they know that it's absolutely impossible. They're, 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 but they're, they're young people ha have Terry. Young people have the ability to go out and make more money potentially. Young people have the ability to work double hours. They have the ability to train in something else and, and get another job and earn more money that way. As pensioners, there is less opportunity for you to do that. Yes. And so the argument is that that then really needs protecting. Budget. How do, Terry, what could the budget have added that would have benefited you greatly? Well, obviously, um, <laughs> the, give, give the uh, tax deduction on the tax, not the national insurance, that as uh, small as it is, it would have helped. But uh, it's, it's an easy target. Hit the grey vote. But the grey vote will only stay subdued for so long. You We've see. had how many years now of this, this ragbag of a government? Mm. I don't know. Uh, but Do you think Labour's going to do, if Labour wins the next general election, do you think Labour will do much better? No, I don't. I've no, I've no, I've no faith whatsoever in Keir Starmer. I, I, uh, they, they usually leave the economy in a mess. They left it in 2009 in a, in a shambles. That's a bleak outlook you've got there, Terry. Would you, can yeah, you give I, Terry I, any Terry, optimism, Terry, Nina? Terry, I was going to say, I, nobody's actually um, damaged the, the economy more than, than the present um, Tory government. If you, if you look at Liz Truss, the damage she's well, well, done. That, 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 we, I think Liz Truss should have been sent to the tower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Terry, thank you very much for your call. Peter from Northamptonshire, there's so many calls on this. What's your thoughts about what the budget did for pensioners, if anything at all? Well, basically nothing at all, really. I mean, I started work 1960 at the age of 15. Um, I then, some years later, took out and paid for a private pension, which now puts me, like other people, mm. into the tax. And I don't think that's correct. I think that at the end of the day, you know, we should be treated a little bit fairer because it's not a huge sum of money that we take. Yeah. And, I mean, basically, when you look at it, the, the way that um, the money is wasted in this country... I mean, putting people in hotels, it's absolutely disgusting. OK, we're, we're moving on to a different topic there. Absolutely nothing at all to sort it out. Okay. They've brought out a load of rubbish about Rwanda. Peter, at the end of the I day, think we're, we're, what's happening here is we're diverging onto another topic, but I understand you would rather they cut the funding from one place and gave it to pensioners. Thank you very much for your call. David from Pick.